Thank you. Please enjoy. Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in video games. The long-awaited expansion to Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, FNAF Ruin, has finally dropped. Now, I already covered some of the previously unused content that's been re-implemented, but what about some new content that goes unused? Well, that's just what we'll dive into here. Hopefully, there's not an entire movie's worth of cut stuff this time. Anyways, put on your AR masks and bonk the like button below. It's time to check out some Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin Lost Bits. Alright, so to kick things off for this video, there's actually a currently unused model of a rabbit animatronic simply known as Rabbits. Go figure. Now, as you can see, this model is quite creepy. Now granted, most of the animatronics in Ruin are much creepier looking than in Security Breach, but this rabbit takes things at least a few steps further. Creepy teeth, a weird exoskeleton and ears, and not to mention the giant Iron Man glowing heart. Now, it's currently not 100% clear where or how this rabbit was to be implemented, but there's reason to believe that this may have been an early or alternate design for the AR bunny known simply as the entity that appears to annoy you when you put on the mask. Probably the biggest connection between the two is that they, well, basically share the same name in the game's files, and the one that is used is straight up just called New Rabbit. And to add to this, although the old version of the rabbit doesn't have many animations left over, there's one that appears to have been meant for the section in the game where you walk down this long path inside an AR tube thing in the catwalks above Gator Golf, where the rabbit gets blocked by Helpy. This animation just appears to line up pretty well with the entity being blocked by the wall that gets generated there. The old rabbit also has a few very creepy animations apparently meant for it teleporting around. They go by really fast, but if we slow things down frame by frame, we can see how twitchy it looks like this rabbit may have originally been. Now I'm not sure why the decision was made to change the rabbit to look like a Scooby-Doo villain straight out of Cyber Chase, but this model is pretty detailed, so there was quite a bit of work put into it. I can only assume that maybe a call was made to make the character look more cyber to fit the AR aesthetic seen throughout the game, rather than I guess a more traditional animatronic from the series. And unfortunately, it looks like this came at the cost of the new design looking quite a bit less horrifying. And speaking of this rabbit, there also appears to be at least one animation for it that goes unused. This is referenced simply as Test Idle Animation, but one key observation from it is that unlike the rest of the entity's animations, which are very choppy, this one has it moving quite smoothly. Now next up, although not unused itself, there's a chance during one of the sections in the game where Cassie comes across a busted up malfunctioning staff bot near Roxy's Raceway, and for most cases it will play out like this. I'd love to get a signal if I head deeper into the raceway. Do you need assistance? Do you need assistance? Do you need assistance? Shh. Be quiet! However, there's also an alternate possibility where instead of it just being a staff bot talking to you, Gregory will actually try communicating to you through it instead. Gregory? Now personally, I don't know if there are certain criteria that has to be completed in order to get this second outcome, and as interesting as this is on its own, there's actually a bit more to this if we check the dialogue coded in the game. So as it turns out, in the game's ending, it was actually mimic, well, mimicking Gregory's voice the entire game in order to debate us into disabling the Mex's computer that I guess was containing the mimic in the depths under the Pizzaplex. Well, every time throughout the game we hear Mimic trying to speak to us as Gregory, the game lists the dialogue as coming from Grimic. And no, it's not the purple taste bud that had his birthday recently with the whole milkshake and Game Boy game shebang, but yeah, this actually appears to be a mix of Gregory and Mimic. Anyways, during this one scene, as well as at the ending of the game when it is the real Gregory speaking to us, it's actually differentiated from the Grimmick version, so this appears to suggest that outside of the ending, this is basically the only other time the real Gregory was able to make contact with us. Now unfortunately, he isn't able to keep contact as the staff bot breaks apart, 
But this small detail, I think, is really interesting, as without checking the dialogue in the game's files, most would also be led to believe that this was just Mimic. Then even further adding to this, there appears to be an unused voice line for the staff bot that says the same thing that Gregory does here. Cassie. 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 Is that you? Cassie. Cassie. Is that you? Now I've seen some people say that this is heard when you approach this part with the mask on, but if you have the mask on, you actually don't hear the bot at all. And I've heard theories that this file was merged with Gregory speaking or something, but that's a completely separate file and you don't really hear the text-to-speech staff bot voice as it's heard in the game. Does this have any more lore significance? I don't know, someone get a hold of MatPat or FNAF. And now, for the last part of this video, FNAF Ruin actually added a metric butt-ton of unused maps, like 85 or something. Now granted, some of these are really small, or only have some very basic geometry left over that is neither easy on the eyes, or easy to make out what is what and where is where. So for this video, I'll just be focusing on the unused maps that have more rhyme and reason to them in their leftover states, or just ones that are more significant. So to start things off here, we have an early version of the Phaser Blast section of Ruin. At first glance, this may just look like a bunch of blocks and other shapes, and well, it is, but there is somewhat of a path still laid out here. The first of many floating developer texts we'll see in this video gives us a starting point here, but strangely it doesn't really have anything around it. My assumption is that this is a placeholder for Vanny's room, where the warp tunnel thing seen in the game kicks you out. Anyways, beneath this we have a rough layout of the Phaser Blast play area. After getting to this drop-down section, it doesn't really make much sense in this date, but we can also see a block that indicates that Freddy was to break on through it, and it looks like this is the one that ends up being busted in this cutscene, and then there's also this green blocker indicating to pass through it in RW. RW is short for real world in these maps, and these are the obstacles seen in the game's AR view that require the mask to be pulled off to pass. We'll see these quite a bit going forward, so if you see this color of block, that's probably what it is. Interestingly, this is also one of the maps in the game that the real world and AR version of the map aren't in the same file, and the AR version is separate. As seen in some other early versions of the maps that do it like this, the layouts are almost the same, only instead of the real world blockers, we have the blockers that require you to put on the mask instead, and these are typically seen in purple to match the AR color palette seen in the game. Now this map has another section which appears to be the ending of this area. You go through a vent, drop down, and then walk through a hallway with a few rooms along the way. Although it's obviously not even close to being as detailed, I gotta hand it to them, they didn't stray too far from the early layout here. We got the debris here already planned, and it looks like this area leading into the next section is pretty similar too. The big difference though is that originally, it looks like a stairwell leading up to the end of this area was planned, and this was cut from the final version. Then also for Phaser Blast, we have a map dealing with gameplay, and I guess this is basically just referring to the chase section in this area. This map is lacking many things, but left over we can see placeholders for some AR inhibitors, the child nodes, as well as these cool looking color coded teleporting things that I guess would eventually become the warp doors. Then moving along, next up we have an early version of the lower area of Gator Golf. And if you thought the first Phaser Blast map was hard to make sense of, yeah, this one looks even more basic. I guess they don't call these white box maps for nothing. I'm sure the layout might be similar to how it's seen implemented in the final version, but honestly, in this state, it was really tough to tell what exactly most things were even supposed to be. Then next, we have an early bowling security office map, which seemingly starts off in a room with a large block with the text, Press Y to teleport. I'm assuming this was some sort of function left for people testing this map, and where exactly it would teleport isn't clear but I reckon this was an early function for the AR mask, and this would teleport the user between the real and AR world below. In any case, we can proceed down a hallway, which at first seems like it leads to a dead end. But if we go through this wall, we can see it leads to another hallway, and then this room leads to yet another hallway, but this time with what looks like a red path on the floor, with arrows indicating something. 
Not exactly sure what this could have been meant for, as I believe this is supposed to be this part of the game near the bowling alley, and there's nothing really there that would go around this hallway like this. A similar purple path like this is seen in the previous hallway in the AR version of this map seen below it. And just like the other one, I can't really think of what this could have been for, but if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Another thing that was cool to see in this map are these placeholder X's on the corresponding doors that are blocked off in the real or AR world respectively, and from a distance, we can see how they swap between versions. Next stop, we have an unused early version of the cupcake section of the game, more specifically the server room area. So yeah, before everything looked as cool as this, a basic path with some white boxes was put together first. The most interesting part, I thought, was to check out the early AR music room, which looks way less interesting here. We can also see an early version of the waterfall later seen in this area, and here it's just an opaque plain. Nice. There's also no wet floor sign bought behind it yet, but there is this small red cube found here. There is nothing in this area in the final game, and once again, nothing in this next area where another red cube appears here, so I'm not really sure what exactly these were meant to be. So we talked briefly about the lower Gator Golf section earlier, but up next here are a few early versions of the Monty Ride leading up to the upper catwalk section of that area. Here we can see a few of the Monty Ride cart things, as well as a really early version of the ride. As a placeholder for the set pieces seen in the ride, here we literally have stuff like a cylinder or some blocks being stand-ins for the characters added in later. The layout and planned story appears slightly different too, as this thing, which I can only assume was a placeholder for the tornado seen in the final ride, is seen much earlier on here, and in the final ride, it's basically the last thing you see leading up to the catwalk section. There's another early version of the section too that's similar, but it looks to have a slightly different layout again, and finally, what looks to be perhaps the earliest design of this area is the map where the Monty Carts weren't even implemented yet, and there aren't even any placeholders for any of the set pieces seen in the ride. There's just a really basic red rail for the carts to attach at this point. And although that may not seem too interesting, the best part of this map is that just outside of the walls is a comically large endo just chilling there. Now in the final game, after the daycare area, you enter a giant endo which leads to a vent segment which breaks right into the Monty ride. So this looks like a really early implementation of that. But whatever the case may be, I just think this looks hilarious. Anyways, lastly for this area, we have the other end of the ride you get to after completing the catwalk section, which leads to the maintenance area. Not too much to say about this one, although it's obviously still lacking most things, the layout is basically the same as it's seen in the final version. Up next, we have this small area known simply as Section 12, and here, out of bounds, we can see some palm tree leaves next to what I can only assume are the trees that would have had these leaves on them, and I believe these palm trees are seen in the daycare area in the final game. There's also some crates, as well as some production line equipment with parts of an endo left on it. Then inside are some orange checkered blocks, which really contrast with the rest of the default grey ones. There's a numbered cube, some radioactive barrels, as well as these purple things. Not exactly sure what these are, but since there's a few of them in this room, I'm thinking maybe they're a placeholder for the child node things. So we've seen early versions of a bunch of the areas so far, but one that's been notably missing is Roxy Raceway, and that area is up next. First, we have this bigger area, just referred to as Part 1, and since the go-kart jump scare is on this side, I believe the start of the area starts on the other side here. Right away, based on how basic the walls look here, this feels much more like a maze compared to the illusion of it appearing more open-ended like it does in the final. We then of course run into a whole pile of floating developer text indicating the forklift here, a placeholder conduit puzzle, and then this security camera station has replace with color floating above. And interestingly, this same text is seen above every security camera in this map too, I guess they wanted to change them all to red as a scene in the final. Also interesting is that unlike some of the other maps we've seen, this one has the AR wall as well as a real world block or two in the same area. There's also this breakable gate, so this appears to be an early version of the section where you have to trick Roxy using the security camera voice, which leads her to break down a door, and I guess this was that door. 
Following this, there's a trigger box that I reckon was to activate the jump scare cart here, which oddly enough isn't facing towards us like it does in the final version. Then finally, this map wraps up with another conduit puzzle, what looks to be like another trigger box that would activate another cutscene where Cassie chats on the walkie-talkie. And then finally, at the end here, is text indicating that this is meant to eventually be made into a small hole for the player to walk through in order to find this secret Minecraft cube here. And this doesn't seem to have made it into the final cut of this area. There's actually another nearly identical version of this map, and it appears that the only difference is that the first AR wall was moved to where the real world blocker was initially, which itself seems to have been just removed from the area, which makes sense, since this is intended to be the AR version of the map. Oh, also, we have a reference now to a soft jump scare here, and since this is at the start of the area, this was, I guess, made into the staff bot jump scare we were going over earlier. And if that wasn't enough, there's also what appears to be an even earlier version of the map, as there's a lack of carts, puzzles, security cameras, and pretty much most things that were seen in the other versions. Now moving on, next is the salon area of Roxy's Raceway, and we got a few interesting things here too, like a creepy Gregory here just asserting his dominance in an A pose. There is more developer text indicating where the player would start in this area, as well as instruction to fix this door to make it fit better into the doorway. Yeah, that's at least a few inches off. Other stuff here includes a broken conduit puzzle, colors the cameras were to be changed to, literal smoke, a locked door that Roxy would bash through in a cinematic, reference to a pole that the devs were instructed to break and tilt towards the exit, which I wish we could see, but it looks like it's missing here. There's a placeholder dud real-world inhibitor here, which I believe is also seen in the game, and there's also reference here to a diffuser attachment. Now, whatever this attachment was, was apparently to be found near one of the child nodes, and in the final game, no such attachment is found near any of them, let alone in the game overall, so I have no clue what this could have been. Next up, we have what looks like an early version of Roxy Raceway the second time you go there near the end of the game listed as Roxy Racer, and here it looks like this area was changed quite a bit. We got more conduit puzzles, a reference to some maintenance tool, which I doubt was supposed to be the Faz Wrench since this would mean you wouldn't get it until near the game's end. Then there's also some text indicating that nothing was to be modeled behind one of the garage doors. And I'm not really sure what just to pull from for first pass means exactly, as there's no garage door here in the final version of this map, as this is where you take the path to the underground section of the Pizzaplex. These blue cylinders are placeholders for bots, I assume staff bots, which is kind of weird since they aren't really seen all too much in the final version in this area. There's instruction here to cover or remove glass, and it looks like this did end up happening in the real-world version of this area, but in the AR version, it's neither covered nor removed. There's also a noticeable lack of reference to Roxy or her fate here at all yet, and then probably my favorite thing in this map is this wire puzzle. Since this same map and every other map we've seen specifically references the other puzzles as a conduit puzzle, this leads me to believe that there was a chance this may have been something else. There is of course also the chance that two different developers just refer to the same puzzle by a different name, but since this is the only instance that I've come across of something being referred to as a wire puzzle, I'm thinking it could have been something else, especially since it looks like it was supposed to appear in the garages here, and it was completely scrapped from the final version of the area. Then lastly for the Roxy Raceway area, we have an early version of the Flume Ride section, but there's nothing too crazy here. It's basically just a less polished version of the final map, lacking textures and the like. Other semi-interesting but difficult to look at or make sense of areas include the main entrance lobby, as well as the main bowling area, which had these disco ball looking things all over the place that don't have anything in their corresponding spots in the final version of the map, so I'd love to know what these were meant for. There's also an early version of the daycare, the inside stomach area from Gator Golf, Another area from the Roxy Raceway Salon section with not one, but two creepy Gregories just chilling here for some reason. There's an early version of the cupcake section with these blue boxes serving as placeholders for conduit puzzles. And then also for the cupcake area is this large room with a curved path, and here we once again have a pair of A-posing Gregories. 
I don't recall there being a room like this in the final game, but the closest thing I can think of is this area where Chica is seen with all the battery acid on the floor, where you have to trick her with the camera system. And now, saving the best for last are some of my favorite unused areas left over in this game. The first of these is an early version of the ending of the game, just referenced in the files as Sinkhole. For the first part here, we start out going down the tunnel path as we do in the final, but here it just looks like a polygonal mess. This eventually brings us to the inner cave, and here we can see some, uh, artistic developer liberties being taken. Yep, those sure are some nice waterfalls. Although it obviously doesn't look as nice as it does in the final version, and equally as obviously it isn't supposed to, but I think it still has a liminal space charm to it that I think makes it feel oddly comfy. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. Now moving on to the next area, we see some incredibly important dev text left over reading, something cool that maybe foreshadows Carnival, pending JTOP's thoughts. Now, JTOP is referring to Jason Topolsky, the co-founder, executive producer, and creative director at Steel Wool Studios who developed this game. So yeah, his opinion on how and where things go definitely holds some weight. But most importantly, this also references Carnival. Now, what exactly Carnival is, is currently unknown, and unfortunately, whatever the idea was for this was scrapped, as there's nothing in this area in the final game that hints at, well, anything, but the way this is worded makes me think that it could be some future project, be it another game or even another future DLC for this game. At this point, all we can really do is speculate. Now to throw more fuel onto this fire, on the topic of Carnival, Maz has also pointed out that a section of the Mimic Chase theme also sounds kind of like a Carnival or Carousel, so if anything, at the very least, this might also be a slight teaser for whatever Carnival is. Anyways, back to the sinkhole area, next we run into placeholder Candy Cadet here, or should I say, Cylinder Cadet. And then, after making our way down, we can see that apparently there were once plans to incorporate a cinematic where Cassie would fall through the stairs here, and this idea appears to have been scrapped. And then we get to the MXES room, where it's actually completely absent, it doesn't even have placeholder dev text for it yet either. Instead, we just have floating dev text for the computer, forklift, as well as overlapping text on this wall, indicating how it would only open from the computer, and then how the forklift would break on through the wall behind it. Then through this wall, we can see a placeholder for the Mimic cinematic, another wall broken by the forklift, and then the final chase is on, as we can see a few walls that were planned to have the Mimic punch and crash through. This doesn't seem to have been something that was fully realized, as in the final game, Mimic just kinda chases you around without busting down any obstacles or anything along the way. Then further on in this cave, we can also see a placeholder for the goofy secret ending that you can find here. And here we just have a nice placeholder graphic and some text telling you exactly what this was going to be made into. This map finally culminates in the last section, where going left you can see a really basic version of the scooper room with really nothing in here yet. And finally, going down the normal path, we can see where the final conduit puzzle was going to go, as well as where the player ends the game. Now for the most part, the layout of the ending section here is pretty similar, but the same can't be said for the next map, which if you could believe it, is an even earlier version of this area. Here we have an incredibly basic tunnel at the start, where we can also see another creepy A-posing Gregory within it. I'm assuming he was placed in here for scaling to make sure the tunnel size would be big enough for the player. Then we have a really basic inside of the old pizzeria with yet another Gregory model. There's a really early version of the room with the forklift that lacks any of the other objects later added. And then through the next door is probably the most interesting change in any of the early maps. Instead of a mimic cutscene, it looks like the original plan was to feature the original three animatronics? Yup, reminiscent of the scrapped Showtime segment from FNAF Help Wanted, we can see the original FNAF 1 designs of Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy on stage here, with a single slice of cake found on this table. In the next room, there's also a small closet with a curtain, and there's nothing like this seen anywhere else here, so I'd like to speculate that this would have been some sort of mini Pirate's Cove for Foxy. 
Now unfortunately, there's no other information really to help solidify what the plan was for these, and I have no idea what the lore significance of this could have been, but honestly, I think this would have made for a really cool ending, especially considering it could have been something you didn't have to read the FNAF books to better understand. But at this point, do any of us really understand the FNAF lore anymore? I digress, it looks like this room would have resulted in another chase sequence down this long hall which would have led to a door, as well as this long vent which I guess could have served as an exit. And exiting at all is much different than the ending that normally plays out, that's for sure. Finally, there's also another unused map for the sinkhole, and here we basically just have a really early version of the computer room using even more basic placeholders there. And we also have a really small section of the cave chase area where here the secret ending is also seen in a more rudimentary state. Here, dev text can be found saying, secret ending, JTOP decides what goes here. So it looks like this was from a point in development where the devs already planned the secret exit to be found in the cave, but what would be placed there to lead to it was still up in the air, and again, going to be a decision left to Jason Topolsky. And now lastly, we have one of the smallest unused maps, but also arguably the most significant. The testing map here puts us on a relatively small white plane, and we also have two objects that we can interact with. Although the prompt to open the gift box here keeps flickering, which doesn't let you interact with it, if you stand in the right spot, you can actually open it to reveal that it contains a party pass. But the best part of this map is found here with this glitchy box. This one prompts us to press the E key to fix this glitch, and upon doing so, we're instantly greeted with a windscreen, and oh hey, what's that? Survival menu? Next night? Yep, that's right, it looks like the survival mode that was scrapped from Security Breach may still be on the table. It also looks like the concept was reworked from how we saw it before, now seemingly with objectives involving finding rare night codes and rescuing spirits in addition to finding collectibles. Unfortunately, this is about all I could find left of the survival mode at this time, and no, this doesn't confirm that it's coming as the devs very easily could just abandon the idea like they seemingly did with the original plan, but hey, the fact that it was worked on even in some capacity has to mean something, right? And if you're an optimist, this should be some pretty good news. Although a survival mode doesn't really make that much sense in Ruin just based on how linear the game is, this DLC launch would have been a really good opportunity to add it to Security Breach. But for now, I guess all we can do is wait and see if this survival mode will ever truly see the light of day. And we'll leave it there for now. I'm not sure how much cut content will end up being found for Ruin, but I have a feeling it won't turn into another movie length video. But if anything interesting turns up, I'll be sure to cover it, so make sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. Till then, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.